welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Sing it if you know it. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, well, what I do know is that this today's, um, let's face it, quite pride inspired look, although I wasn't intending it to be a pride look when I started, it kind of ended up like one, has been achieved with this beautiful palette. This, as if you haven't already seen on the thumbnail, the title and the description, is the ABHX Alyssa Edwards palette. So, what do I think of this palette? How easy was this look to achieve? Knowing what I know now, would I buy her again? All these questions and more, you will find the answers too when you sit and enjoy this film. Hey, welcome back from the intro. It is so dark out there. Beginning of June and it's absolutely piddling hard. I'm glad it was nice yesterday though for D-Day because obviously it was the 75th anniversary of that yesterday. Well, when I'm filming this, not when you're seeing this. I would have shown you this in the intro. But I'm not going to play. I have already used this in one film. Um, the photo inspiration collab that I did, round two with Marlin. So you will have already seen this. But for those of you who haven't seen that film. Here she is. In all her glory. Okay. Now, some of these shades are pressed pigments. They are Texas Made, which is this pink, Dream It, which is this blue, BBDC, I've got no idea what that means, uh, which is this purple here. Was it Bye Babe Don't Care or something? I don't know. Uh, and Believe, which is this purple over here. If you know what BBDC stands for, and H-O-E, because it's got dots between it, so it's not just the word ho, and D-D-G, can you let me know? Because obviously I'm... It's not so easy for us to watch RuPaul over here, and I'm behind on a lot of the series, so I don't think I've seen the one that has Alyssa in it. So I have no idea what those are acronyms for. But shall we get some of this on my face? Yes. Um, as always, my films are aimed at all skill levels from beginners right through to experts. Not that I'm claiming to be an expert, of course, far from it. Uh, but that, combined with chronic pain, does mean that my films go at a slower rate than most people's. If I am going too slowly for you, there is a speed widget. Please use it and speed me up. Please do not complain that my film is going slowly because it's either pain or it's because remember what you were like when you were a beginner and you were learning. Okay, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and I have used my antiperspirant primer even though it's raining because it's still going to be quite warm this afternoon so warm plus rain equals humid equals bleh. so let's get you zoomed in I have done swatches I'll stick those up on screen I've probably already stuck them up on screen as I was zooming in actually knowing me uh, so I'll just talk you through them Top row is left to right, starting with a white one. Headliner, Inspire, Unicorn Tribe, Brick Road, Texas Made, Dream It, Back Rolls. And then the bottom row is the Supreme, HOE, DDG, BBDC, Beyond Believe and Beast. Okay, I'm back. 
Right, all I've got on my eyes at the moment is a uh, MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have... And that's the front door. Okay. I'm back again. You know, it's dark. Well, every time I sit down, I always seem to get the door go. It's crazy. Okay, now. I don't have hooded eyes. I have deep set eyes. But I do get a lot of the same problems that people with hooded eyes have. In that... I get transference of shimmers up onto the upper lid, etc. Now, sorry, I'm out of breath because I'm in pain. And I stood chatting at the door for a couple of minutes. <clears throat> Ridiculous. Love chronic pain. <sighs> Ooh, so. Right. The way to tell whether you have a hooded lid or a deep set eye. When I look straight forward with my eye open and my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid. It's not covered at all. Now, if you have your static lid completely covering, i.e. coming right down to the lash line for either part or all of the lid, then you have a hooded eye. So you have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. A lot of people Particularly fat people like myself that have that can tend to get quite fatty pockets up here because if you look back at photos of me from ten years ago, I look like I have hooded eyes because you cannot see any of this at all. Where I'd got such a big fat pocket here, it completely covered it. But having lost ten stone, you can now see my eyes again. But they are deep set. If I cover up the mobile lid and close this eye, you can see I've got as much lid again because there's the crease that tucks back away inside and if I cover the top lid and close it I've got about half as much space again there so I do have the same issues that people with hooded lids have so all of my tutorials are hooded lid friendly Okay. if you do have a completely covered lid and you need to create a lid get something like this flat top brush or a pencil brush and just sketch out where you need your crease to fall because obviously for my crease I'm going to follow my socket although if I need the colour to appear above my eye I need to make sure I bring it further up when my eyes open especially if I'm going to cut my crease but this will become apparent as we continue obviously if you move your crease up you're going to have less space between your crease and your brow just use slightly smaller brushes than I am and you'll be fine. Right, this is actually a Boozy Shop tapered blending brush that I got free when I bought uh, a couple of bits and pieces from them. I had an offer on. It is clean but it is stained. As you can see, there is no pigment coming off of the brush. Oh. The thing is, normally I go straight into the purples but I used purple in the look that I did yesterday. So maybe I'll try something a little bit different. I'm going to start off with Brick Road, the yellow. As always with Anastasia, there's a lot of kick up in the pan. Doesn't worry me though, um, because I can pick the kick up up and use it next time as in when I need to add more. So with my eye open, I'm just going to pop this in the inner corner, coming about to the edge of the coloured part of my eye. And because my um, primer is not set, I'm just tapping this on rather than blending. I'm just literally packing the pigment in to place. So I'm setting my primer with a coloured pigment rather than a translucent powder. This really helps with giving colours oomph, if you know what I mean by that. So I'm just... Just... 
tapping to blend rather than doing lots of circles because the thing is when when you start doing that you can sometimes lose some of the pigment you've put down but this one's not too bad actually so now I'm going to do the same thing this side obviously I'm following my natural crease if you've had to create a crease you just follow the crease that you've put down and I'm, I'm leaving sort of four or five mils between the top of the colour and my brow so that when we pop the brow bone highlight on it's not swallowed up by the beautiful colours we've got on the lid now with this side because this is the eye that I'm blinding it got pulled around a lot when I was five years old it's left me with super deep creasing here which can give me um, like tiger striping just here so I do have to gently stretch my lid out do not do this if you don't need to because otherwise you will give yourself creasing like what I have got and I can assure you it only gets worse as you get older so a little bit of blending to make sure we haven't got any loose pigments up there I like I keep sitting back and checking because obviously my eyes are not symmetrical few people's are so you do have to make sure that what you're doing matches up each side so I'm going to go into Texas made which is one of the uh, pigments now in America these are all marked as not safe for the immediate eye area the only reason they say that is because they can stain and if you've got very sensitive skin you might get a reaction to them so if you're worried test them out on the skin in the crook of your elbow 24 hours just just pack a load into your elbow leave it there next day see what it looks like if you're going to react to it you will so again i picked up i've not tapped off because i just with pigments you don't really want to tap off because the majority of shadows have a lot of talc or mica in them and that's what helps them to blend but pressed pigments have more colour molecules in terms of the ratio between the colour and the blending agent so I don't tend to tap off it's one of the reasons I always do my base afterwards because uh, you can end up with some fallout but if you tap off nine times out of ten it will take you forever to build the pigment up so I know this is looking very blocky it's because I'm not going to do any blending between the colours until I've put all the colours in place where I want them I mean if you like this kind of editorial look then you don't have to do any blending um, I did an editorial look with the Wet and Wild, um, oh, what was it called? It was the Roses collection they did. Uh, one of the palettes from that, the Bed of Roses one. And uh, I had so many comments saying, oh, you need to learn how to blend. And I'm like, what? No. The point of this one was that I was doing an architectural editorial look. I didn't want it blended, I wanted the harsh lines between the colours. So I'm just packing this pink on again here. As you can see I'm literally just tap, 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 tap to blend that. And again I've gone to sort of roughly the outer edge of uh, the iris and I'm cleaning my brush off on a microfiber cloth that I've got in front of me and then I'm going to go into Dream It which is another one of the pigments I did use the yellow yesterday but I like it so I wanted to use it again and I'm going to pop this right on the outer edge I didn't use this pink or this blue yesterday so 
I'm trying to encourage the weather to stop raining. I thought perhaps if I do a nice bright look, perhaps the weather will do me a solid and start to match my makeup. It probably won't, but um, you know, a girl can hope. This again is a pressed pigment. I think this would have, it's looking a little bit patchy. I think it would probably apply better with a less, um, with a more densely packed brush. But as you can see, it is building up. It's just taking a wee bit more time. I'm going to have to watch that one when I blend out. I might need to add pigment to the brush when I blend that one out to make sure we don't lose any colour. So, how's your day been so far? Hope it's a good one. Or if you're at the beginning of your day and you're watching me over breakfast, what are you having? Pancakes? Syrup? Oatmeal? Bacon sandwich, muesli, toast, or coffee. <laughs> what are you having? Let me know. And I hope that your day will be a good one. Right, okay. Now, I'm going to pick up some yellow on one side of the brush and some pink on the other. And I'm going to drag pink across onto the yellow and the yellow across onto the pink and then use the tip of the brush just to gently buff between the two so can you see the difference there between the blended and the non and if you think you've lost a little bit too much of the pink pigment you can just add some back in and then gently fluff backwards. I'm holding the brush right at the very end so I put as little pressure on my eyelid as possible. And just gently buff backwards and forwards. And then do the same thing again. Yellow on one side of the brush. Pink on the other. Always drag the darker one across first. So I pink across onto the yellow. And then yellow across onto the pink. And then gently buff the two together. Might take a little bit of patience, but you'll get there. And like I said, if you decide you need to add a little bit more colour in, well, that's easy to do. You can do that and just... You can do circular blending if you want, I've just automatically dropped straight back into doing circular blending. Okay, I like that. Clean the brush off. And now I'm going to do blue on one side, pink on the other. Not as much pink though, I'm just going to very lightly drag that blue across onto the pink. And then Drag the pink across onto the blue and buff where the two colours meet. Pop a little bit more blue on just to reinforce that colour at the edge there. As I said, I did think that pigment was going to go a little bit wafty on me, which it has done. But as you can see, it's fixable, and you can see the difference now between the blended and the not blended. So, pink on one side, blue on the top. So, drag the darker colour across first. So, blue across onto the pink, and then pink across onto the blue. And of course, if you know your colour theory, Pink and yellow gives you a peachy sort of colour. Blue and pink gives you a lilac -y sort of colour. So, 
It's a great way of making it look like you've put a lot more work into your eye look than you actually have. I will be doing at some point this month a rainbow look because I've just realised that all the colourful films that I've done have not actually got a rainbow look on my channel. Which considering the number of rainbow palettes I've got, it's a bit weird. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the easy way to cut your crease. Now the brushes that I use are actually nail acrylic brushes. I picked up a set of six of them for about five quid on eBay years ago. I've got a number 14 and a number 12. And the reason I like these is because look how thin they come down. It's exactly what you want when you're cutting your crease. Now I know cutting your crease can seem scary. It really isn't. Alright, I'm going to show you the really easy way of doing it. No matter what your eye shape, this is how you find out the shape you need to do to cut your crease. Alright? So, I've got my tart shape tape. I'm just going to whack that onto the brush. And then quite haphazardly, just bung it on the lid. And then sit normally, eyebrows relaxed, and just blink a few times. And that takes the concealer right up onto your upper lid, showing you where you need to cut your lid to. I'm just going to grab myself a little mirror so I can sit a bit further, because obviously I can't close this eye, so it's a little bit more difficult. Take your time doing this. And the more you practice it, the easier it gets, I promise you. And yes, I'm going to do a complete cut crease today instead of a half cut crease. So you take it all the way across and then you take all of the concealer off of your brush. And you very lightly just press it into the concealer that you've laid down. Very carefully. And what this will do is it will take off any excess or thick con uh, concealer that you've still got on your lid that could end up mixing in with the shadow that you're about to apply. Okay. Right, seriously, how easy was that? I told you, I will always show you the easiest way to do things and I will always, when I'm on a tutorial, walk you through each step. I did a cut crease in the uh, photo collab that I did, but because that was a photo collab rather than a tutorial, I sped up the second eye. With this eye, I'm going to do it in real time again for you. So beginners, you can absolutely follow on, okay? So I'm going to lean in a little bit closer for you. So obviously I can close this eye. And I'm just going to completely cover, just whack it on quite roughly. Okay? Open your eye, relax your brows, blink a few times. And you now know exactly where to take your concealer to. And I promise you, whatever shape eyes you have, this will work for you. Okay. 
Okay. Right, I'm going to have to stretch this lid out because of that creasing in the inner corner there. Which is very frustrating, but it has to be done, unfortunately. Right, and then clean the concealer off of the brush. And then go back in and very lightly just press the brush onto the concealer that you've laid on the lid. So that you pick up any excess product. Because this is a mistake that a lot of beginners make. They don't do mm. this step. And that's when you end up with your concealer mixing in with the colour that you're now going to put on your lid and sort of muting the colour down almost and making it go patchy. Don't worry about getting it on your lashes because that's what mascara is for. Okay. Now normally I'll do one, let it dry and then go across and do the other one afterwards. But I just thought I'd do the two at the same time this time for you. Because I'm going to do quite a simple look. And now I'm going to get the other clean brush. And I'm going to start off by going into headliner, which is the white in the palette. I'm going to pack that onto the brush. And then just press that. into the concealer because the concealer is still quite sticky but I just I really like it does take a little bit longer using this sort of brush rather than using um, like a packing brush but I much prefer this for the accuracy that you get particularly right up at the edges I mean what you can do if you wanted to speed this, the process up a little bit is pack the pigment on around the edges with this brush Wow, that rain's really coming down hard now. And then get... Um, something like this. Which is actually a concealer brush. And use that to fill in the rest of the lid. Now, once you've push the colour into all of the concealer and set the concealer you can then very carefully wipe across the top with the brush and that will then catch any loose pigment and spread it along the eye like that and yes you get hella fold out but as I said, this is why I do my eyes before I do my base. Let's just mark where the creasings finish. And then pack white onto this one as well. This white in this palette is not as opaque as the white in Riviera. 
Riviera has a lot more opacity to it than this. But, you know, it's doing a solid job, so... I'm not going to complain. So again, I'm just popping, using this acrylic brush to make sure I get accuracy at the edge. like that and I'm going to grab the concealer brush and use that to pack it onto the remainder of the lid and like I said I'm really not worried about the fallout right now once you've got it all in place and you've set the concealer you can then Run your brush over it very, very lightly because we're not trying to take the pigment back off again. We're just trying to catch any loose pigment on the top and spread it across. We get a beautiful white cut crease, like so. I do love doing this look. Right, I'm going to pause you while I do my foundation and everything and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. See you in a moment. Well, instantly for you really, isn't it? I am back. As you can see, purple brows. Right, I'm going to have this flat top brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into... Let's go into BBDC that I still have no idea what it means. And I'm just going to run this right tight along the bottom lash line. I know it looks black, but it's not. It is actually very, very deep purple. And then I'm just going to run that up the outside there just to join it to the colours we've got going on on the top because at the moment where my um, eyes are so watery with my fibro and hay fever as well uh, I'm struggling keeping uh, liquid liner in even the really good waterproof ones are struggling but by putting a darker colour under the lower lash line and continuing it up it gives the illusion it does the same thing it, it gives you the illusion of a wing pulling the eye out and up uh, and it also just finishes the edge of that white off nicely just pull it up so it meets into the blue there well yeah, blue. Clean my brush. And then I've got a brush here that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped but chunky, which is just what you need for buffing out a lower lash line. So I am going to go into. I'm going to go into the Supreme, which is like a peachy colour. I'm just going to use that just to gently buff out the lower lash line. Just to soften it a little bit. See the difference? Can't really see much of that peach to be honest. Kind of blends in with the purple. But that's okay. Got lots of things happening on the top lid, so yes, I'm flinching because it's the eye I'm blinding, so I haven't got any peripheral vision. I'm desperately trying not to poke myself in the eye. Doesn't always work. 
Okay. And I bought one of the um, pot liners from uh, Colourpop because, oh gosh, my nose is itching. I got the yellow one, which is Punch, because Paulina said that when she uses it, she literally has to take it off at the end of the day. It sticks on so well. Now, I wore this yesterday. I'll put a picture up here now, if I remember, showing you how it lasted over five hours. Although most of it was gone, to be honest, there was still more there than I've ever had with anything else. So, got a very, very, very thin liner brush here that I've packed the colour onto. I'm going to very gently just pop that into my waterline. You can see it's such a beautiful colour and now you can see my eyes instantly starting to water. I have such a sensitive eye, I really struggle with getting anything to stay on my waterline. Uh, I can't tight line at all. My eye just streams constantly until all of my face looks a mess. So again, popping this onto the waterline. It's super creamy when it goes on. It doesn't tug or pull at your skin at all. Um, because you know some some pot liners, I mean some some pencil liners can be a bit, you know, tuggy. And you don't you don't want that on your lower lash line. You don't want it anywhere on your eyes, to be honest, because your skin on your eyes is so paper thin that um, you know you will end up with horrible, 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 horrible creasing now. Where to for did I put? Somewhere I have got some glitter liners. Hold on, I'll be back in a minute. I found them. It's by Wispy Winks. And this is their. Oh, it doesn't give you the name at the bottom, it just gives you the expiry. This is obviously their green one. But I just thought it would go quite nicely with that. So, I'm going to grab myself somewhere over here. I've got an angled liner. Where is it? There we go. I've got this angled liner, which is really great for doing super precise lines. And what I like about these um, Wispy Winks ones is that you don't have to go over them a million times to see the glitter it's just instant so I'm literally just dipping the brush into the pot and running it along the edge of the white that we put on doing it in sections because I don't want to overload the brush and get too much on it because that's when you get bits going where you don't want them to go. Now this is cosmetic grade glitter so you can use it um, along your lash line. I prefer not to because if I'm going to wear my contact lens I don't like glitter being close to my eye at all although to be fair um, the times that I've worn this before, I've not had any fallout from it at all. And that includes um, a night in the pub at a karaoke for a friend's birthday, uh, where it got very, very hot. And even then, my liner did not budge. See what a difference that makes, though? Just adding that little bit of glittery something I'm 
might have to lean in for this one and hold that out again because it's getting caught on the creases. But you can see how easily this applies. I've also got a um, like a holographic one, which I could, if I was going out in the evening, what I would probably do is use the holographic one with a fluffy brush and spread it out all over the, the white section. But I think for a, a wet Friday in June, apparently it's National Fish and Chip Day today, so I know we're having tea tonight. For a wet Friday in June, I think this is probably bright enough, don't you think? Just how pretty is that? Right, I'm going to pause you now and I'm going to go and do highlight, uh, mascara, lipstick etc, do something with my hair. I'll be back for the finished look. Hey, I'm back. Hair has gone suitably today. Uh, lipstick, on my teeth again, uh, is the Maybelline Pink for me, number 376 really liking this it's um this to me is my go-to nude this this sort of mauvey pink this is this is my lips but better uh, setting spray of course was my Gerard cosmetics slay all day still got a bit of the watermelon left where I need to go to the coconut highlight uh, was brow and inner corner is Ophra Nikki tutorials glazed donut the white one the first one and cheeks, nose, chin, upper lip, etc., are uh, Space Baby over in Nikki Tutorials, which is one that's got like a pink, pink peach shift to it. Mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Waterproof, which is the dupe for uh, Benefit Bad Girl Bang. And I've got my Butter Bronzer in Bronzer and my Tarte Blush in Exposed On my cheeks. Uh, foundation is a new one that I'm testing out so I'm not going to tell you what that is just yet. But here we go, here is my, I suppose technically my second look with Alyssa Edwards. Um, for all me saying I haven't done a rainbow look, I think now I put that stripe of green on I've pretty much done a rainbow look haven't I? <laughs> so what do you think? Personally, I really like this. Um, obviously, I've used it twice now. I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've used nine of the 14 shades. So, uh, I've got a pretty good idea how I'm feeling about the palette. I really like this. If you've got Riviera, do you need this? No, not really. Um, there's a woman that I follow on Instagram. She did a a, a, match, a, a, a comparison thing. I'll just stick it up here. I think it's is it Angela Mary Tanner. I think it could be because um, I know we have the same first and middle name, hence my why I remember it so well. Um, so you can see there are some shades that are the same or similar um, but there's only really sort of one or two dupes and that's really just the white and the brown to be honest. Um, the rest of them are different enough but if you are someone who is not into using super bright colours and you've got Riviera, do you need this? No, not really. Um, I've got Riviera and I've got this. If they'd both been released at the same time, would I have bought them both? Yes, probably I would have done. Uh, because to me, the shades were different enough 
but I do a lot of colourful looks so you really need to decide for yourself how much you're going to use this now I am going to do I've done two looks with this where I've used bright colours I am going to do another tutorial with this using more neutral shades so if you are someone who isn't used to using colour I'm going to go in and use um, Supreme Ho Brick Road and probably Inspire and do a neutral look for you to show you that you, know, you can get neutral looks out of this admittedly probably not that many uh, you probably get far more brighter looks but then it's a hot pink palette done in collaboration with the drag queen you're going to get colour um, I really like it I've got to be honest I wish there were a green in here the same colour as the glitter that I've put on because the only the only green really is this sort of khaki green which if you're doing a bright look like this it, it's just it's not going to work is it hence why I use my green glitter instead that for me is the only thing missing from this palette a bright emeraldy green but I've got you know I mean, if I grab my slush palette for example it needed a green like this, it needed this in, in that palette and then to me this would be the perfect palette if it had that green um, standard ABH quality blue needed a little bit of tickling but it is a pressed pigment so it's going to behave differently and blues and purples are the most difficult colours to create anyway um, all told having tried this would I, if I'd tried it before I'd bought it, would I still buy it? Yes, I think it's definitely worth your money. So if you like the look of it and uh, it fills a hole in your collection or if you're like me, you just want as many colourful palettes as possible to try out as many different formulas as possible, then, you know. I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy this, but I like it. I like it a lot. So much so. I feel like sticking my cowboy hat on which is just perching on top of my head like a peel of drum. There we go. Hair was far too fluffy. Maybe this will help hold the hair down a bit as well. So, sweet pies, that is my opinion of uh, this palette. So, I can't take myself seriously with this hat when I haven't worn it all through the thing. I'm going to wear that for my um, buy or buy by buy buys though because it did go down quite well so I'll save it for that. But please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still taking people out of the subscription list. It's happening to me quite a bit. I've had to resubscribe to one channel three times so far this month. Ridiculous. Um, and obviously I do have a lot of other films you can watch if I remember. Um, I'll put the link in the description box for the photo collab that I did where I used uh, some of the shades from this palette so you can see some of the other shades as well. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this, found it a little bit fun, a little bit informative. I hope maybe you picked up a skill or two, perhaps it was the, uh, the easy way to do a cut crease, I don't know. Um, I just hope you enjoyed this really. So, all that remains are for me to say, as ever, and let's face it, I've got the right makeup to say this right now, you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.